real southern woman. It is Tuesday, March the 5th. For some reason, I just can't seem to get in here on Monday. On Mondays, we do all of our chores and clean the house and do all that stuff. So I'm always exhausted by the evening. Yesterday, I was so tired. It was crazy. So, <laughs> tonight, we are going to talk about our March the 5th Bible study. And it is in Ephesians. And um, we're going to, we've actually been in Ephesians several times lately. And this is for March the 5th. And it says, uh, let's see, March the 5th, it's out of Ephesians chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. And um, it says, this is Charles Stanley's Jesus, Our Perfect Hope devotional review, okay, for this day. This one, um, I'm watching the, the screen. Okay, here y'all are. <laughs> I thought I was by myself there for a minute. Okay, His Love. It's called His Love. And we just talked about Ephesians chapter 3 not that long ago, probably around Valentine's Day. Um, it says, I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may grasp how wide, how long, and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to all the fullness of God. That is an NIV version, and I'm going to read it out of my KJV as well. That is Ephesians chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. So let's go to my KJV. I've got my women's Bible open, and i got my teen Bible open. Uh, this one is, I, for some reason, I'm in Philippians. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 through 19 says... Those of y'all are familiar with the KJV scripture, it says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, um, this uh, is our women's study Bible, and th the thing that's at the top today is talking about encouragement, words that build people up, and God's will, conforming to his purpose. But down here at the bottom, um, this was a, a prayer that Paul was praying that we're reading from. And it says Paul's prayer has two parts. It says, first, he prayed that God, whose resources are limitless, would grant believers inner strengthening in their present experience. Um, as a result of the empower, as a result of this empowering, Christ would become fully at home in their lives with access to each area of their life and as the governing factor in their attitudes and conduct. So that was uh, his purpose when he wrote the scripture about Christ's love for us. Um, it says, Paul's second petition was based on the fact that the believers have already been placed in the body of Christ, being rooted and grounded in love. Those, those are coming out of verse 17. It says he prayed that they might be empowered to grasp the immensity, the immense, immensely, it says immensity. Y'all, I don't know why they have to use these big vocabulary words in these Bibles like they do, but I guess because they're scholars, I don't know. Because I'm sure not a scholar, right? It says, uh, he prayed that they might be empowered to grasp the immensity of Christ's love and to know that love is in their personal experience and to know that love in their personal experience um, so that's what the women's study Bible says but let's read what uh, Charles Stanley had to say about it how about it he says it is a key to faith that we sometimes take for granted Jesus Loved us so much that he died on the cross. John 3, 16. My dogs are acting up. They're eating their supper while I'm reading as normally. They, they always want to come in here where I'm at. 
But it says Jesus loved us so much that he died on the cross and he acted out of love and that was his motive. Yes, it is sacrificial love. He left his throne in heaven more than three decades, for more than three decades. And he humbled himself to death on the cross. Um, he was willing to give up everything for you. Likewise, it is a saving love. He takes away your sins and restores your relationship with the Father, providing what you could not give on your own. But what can impact your faith today is that it is also a rooting, establishing, and feeling love. The love of Christ grounds you, steadies you, builds you, and satisfies you. In a manner that's intensely personal and unique to your being. That's the truth. He lovingly reaches into the personal and unique of your being. Oh, he lovingly reaches into the deepest places of your inadequacy, fear, hurt, and despair, and fills all that is lacking to overflowing. That is why you can trust him in every situation and always walk in faith. He says, Jesus, your love is amazing. Help me to love and trust you with all that is within me. Amen. That's Charles Stanley. So he's letting us know that his love is not only a saving love, but it's also a rooting, establishing, and feeling love. Um, it can satisfy us in a way that no other love could ever satisfy us. And those of us that have been saved for a while and uh, we've been through a lot know that already, don't we? Um I was going to look while we're on this subject. Let's see. In the Teen Bible, it just talks about how you get strength through the Spirit, and that is through this love. Um, but I am going to read encouragement, words that build up out of my Women's Study Bible. Maybe somebody needs to hear this tonight. Okay? This says, and I know I read from the books, but, you know, hey, that's just the way it is. We're reading together, right? It says, encouragement, words that build up. Paul's words admonish us to speak only good, not corrupt words, words that build up, encourage, and edify. Our words are to constitute a gift to the hearer. Jesus and Paul are examples for us in their use of uplifting words to encourage. Even when his ship started to sink, Paul gave words of encouragement. When Jesus' disciples were sinking, he spoke encouragement to them. When Paul was being persecuted, the Lord appeared beside him and encouraged him. Many people are bowed down under heavy emotional loads and are weary of life's struggles. How eager they are to hear a word of encouragement. Often we turn the other way, but the Lord wants us to give kind words to say if we are willing to make ourselves available. In Proverbs, the book of wisdom, much is written about the value of encouraging words. Not only do pleasant words taste sweet, but their use can lift us up to high places. Whether we want to be encouragers, because Jesus said, be of good cheer, because Paul urged us to take heart, or because we are simply called to lift up the weary, edify the saints, and evangelize the lost. Whatever our reason for wishing to bring sweetness to the soul, now is the time to start. And then it gives us some more scriptural references where we can read. Okay? Uh, so, encouragement, words that build up. I'm sure that, I don't know if y'all ever read the book, uh, The Five Love Languages, but this reminds me of it. We have five different love languages that most of us uh, feel loved through. And one of those are words of encouragement. Now, um, that has never been my main love language, the one that is the most important to me and makes me feel the most loved. But there are many people out there that that is their main love language even. 
So for those people, it's even more important. They do not feel loved unless they hear words of encouragement. And a lot of us lack words of lack someone telling us nice things. And so it's hard for us to feel like we're loved. Um, it is a wonderful thing to do. Um, it's just as easy to say something nice as it is to say something negative. Now, I come from a family of very opinionated. My mom, my dad, they always really and truly raised us to where they were always pointing out. They, they hardly ever said anything positive. Not that they weren't good parents. That's just the way they were. You know, it was, did you fix your hair today? Well, I wish you'd brush your hair. Well, did you do this or did you, you know, that's just how they were. And uh, so because that's the way I was raised, I am that way with my kids. And I had to be real careful sometimes and try to think, you know, say something nice to them. Say something encouraging to them. Um, don't always be negative Nelly. You know what I mean? Um, they've My kids have never really been that crazy about my mother as their grandmother because she has never really um, been a very positive influence uh, in their life. And I'm not saying that to be ugly. I'm saying it to be real. Um, she would point out if they were overweight or if they needed to wear something cuter or et cetera, et cetera. So you, you get where I'm coming from. Um, so we have to be real careful how we talk to those around us and even especially those who live with us and give them some words of encouragement. Um, and it takes some work sometimes if you were raised the way I was to try to revert that around. Now, if I am in God's word and I am studying his uh, lessons and I'm in my Bible, I am more apt to be encouraged. I will not be one to sit back and I'll just go ahead and tell you, the Bible changes you. It changes your attitude. It changes your ways. It changes the way you think. It makes you more content with a lot of things in your life. And that includes uh, those types of areas in your life where you need uh, to be an encouraging mother or sister or um, grandmother or neighbor or friend or whatever it be. So um, y'all keep that in mind. I mean, I'm trust me, I need I need it just as much as y'all do, uh, if not more because of the way I was raised. So just remember that encouraging words do build up. If you want to know what my main love languages were, uh, there's five of them, and I can't even know if I can recall them all. One was words of encouragement. Um, one was um, touch, physical touch, and of course that's mine. One of mine, physical touch and time is one, um, like, I can't remember if the time one, and like when people do things for you, like service, like, um, that's one. Um, I actually love for people to do, like, when somebody does something for me, it makes me feel more loved. If somebody, if somebody feeds me words of encouragement because of the way I was raised, lots of times I think they're full of crap, you know, like a salesman. And so that doesn't really do a whole lot for me. I'm just going to be honest. It really doesn't. What does the most for me is um, them spending their time for me or um, doing something for me or hugging. I love to be hugged. I'm a physical touchy feet, you know, I'm just that kind of person. If, if you're going to be next to me and uh, I'm going to hug you by, I'm going to say, hey, and I'll hug you when you get here and and that kind of thing. That's just how I am. So those two things were the most important for me. But unlike, we're not all made the same where some people don't want to be touched. One of my daughters is not crazy about being touched at all. One of the love languages are is gifts, being given things. Um, and I actually have one of my kids, one of her main love languages is gifts. Believe it or not, it's real important to her. Where it wouldn't be important to me, I could care less if Chris buys me anything. I could care less if he gets me a surprise at Christmas or on my birthday. I really couldn't. It doesn't mean anything to me. But where it doesn't mean anything to me, another woman, on the other hand, it could mean everything to So if you don't know what your love language is, that's a good book to buy. You can read it. 
you know, on an app, but I would prefer it, it being in your hand because it has application in the book where you can answer questions and stuff. And if you get to know each other's love languages, then you you can get along better as um, in your relationships, whether it's a spouse or a friend or your children. It's it's nice to know what their main love love language is. So um, y'all can just look that up. The five love languages, um, and it and it is interesting because one of my daughters has the same um, love languages that I do, and the other one has totally different ones. And it she is the hardest one. It. It is harder for me to relate to her and understand her uh, in general because we're just wired different. So, um, but like I said, words of encouragement are important. And I say that they don't matter to me, but in ways they do because like with Collar Valley Cooks or this Real Southern Woman, if y'all take the time out and tell me, you know, how something has influenced your life or how um, you are enjoying the Bible studies or... Um, I had one lady tell me that she went out and bought her a new Bible, and those kinds of things are encouraging to me. Um, so, I'm not saying I don't believe any words. I'm Y'all kind of get where I'm going with that. Um, but, so I do like some encouraging words, um, especially with the Bible study, because God works in mysterious ways, and it is amazing the little seeds that we sow, what they can do. Um, and, it, and just having somebody here to talk to and be our friend and make us accountable for reading the Word of God helps too. Because we are in the flesh and we're not perfect. And it's just nice when we know that there's somebody out there uh, that's going to, you know, look at this information with us. And it helps us be more accountable. I hope y'all have had a wonderful and blessed day. Me and Chris have had a good day. I've had a migraine for two days, but I did get a lot done anyway. Yesterday, we got a ton of chores done, cleaned the whole entire house. Um, and then today, we do our filming on Tuesday for our new cake lesson um, channel. And then we do our filming on Wednesday for Colored Valley Cook. So um, after tomorrow, then I can get a rest maybe. Um, I hope, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I guess I've talked long enough tonight. It's good to have y'all all on here. It's good to see everybody. And um, I guess I'm going to say our prayers and we're going to go. And today uh, for cake lessons, we made tons and tons of icing. I have a cake in there that's so pretty. I guess I could give you a sneak peek. Amy asked me tonight when we made supper, I made breakfast for supper, and she was like, Mama, when are we going to eat that cake? And I said, well, I'm probably going to do a couple of more things before we eat the cake. I just wore out, wore myself out today and couldn't do any more. And she's like, you mean I have to wait to eat the cake? And I said, yes, but tomorrow I will be making a pie for Colored Valley Cook, so, so you'll get a bite of the pie. But let me show y'all. I'll give y'all a sneak peek, and then I will say our prayers. This is for um, cake lessons. And so y'all have to watch cake lessons to see what it's all about. Um, but yes, this is a real cake on the inside. One of the cakes I did today was fake on the inside, but this one's the real thing. Um, so Amy's ready to eat it. Okay. Let me put it back up. But cake is one of those things that actually gets better if it's sat for a couple of days. Um, it makes it moister and I actually froze that one so it'll be good and moist. But if you freeze your cake layers and then uh, and then take them out and ice them, and it actually makes them more moist. It's proven. Test it out if you don't believe me. Um, so let's say our prayers tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much. We thank you for today, and we thank you for um, everything you've done for us. Please be with the victims of the tornadoes that hit the southern states um, a couple of days ago. It was horrifying, and and. and I know that they, I just can't imagine what all those people are going through. Uh, may we be supportive 
Um, if there's anyone we know that we can help or any way we can help, I pray that we can try our best. And if nothing else, we can pray for them. Um, I pray that uh, your hand would be on that situation on each and every family involved. Um, and I just thank you so much for uh, keeping us here in the northern st of the state of Georgia safe. I know it hit the southern areas more. Um, and I just thank you for um, loving us, sending your son to die for us. And I pray that we are all ready so that if a tornado does come through and um, we are killed, that we will not die and that we'll be taken straight to heaven to be with you because we know Jesus is our Lord and Savior. And I just pray that uh, your will be done, which is that everyone should come to know Jesus as their Savior. Um, and we just uh, will hope to see everybody tomorrow, Lord willing. And, well, tomorrow is church, so we'll see. Um, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. We'll see. See y'all tomorrow on Cake Lessons, too. Bye. I love you.